Hey guys, it's Farm and a Table. Today we're going to show you the best way for a new player to make a character in Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons is actually a very simple game to get into, but whenever I try to introduce a new player to the game, they tend to get hung up on the character creation. D&D is currently in its fifth edition, and it has more of a focus on who your character is than it ever has before. So the first thing you want to do is determine who the character is, and then you want to determine what the character can do. Your choices which define who your character is are race, be it dwarf, elf, human, etc. Your background, which is a basic summary of what your character did growing up before he became an adventurer. And your character's stats, which we'll talk about later. Those things will determine who the character is. Then you'll have to determine what the character can do, which will mostly be covered by their class. Those are things like fighter, wizard, ranger, etc. Everything a new player needs to make a character in Dungeons & Dragons is going to be found in the player's handbook, which we have right here. As you make these decisions, you'll want to write them down on your character sheet. If you don't have a character sheet, you can easily print one out using the link that we provided in the description. The first decision you're going to have to make for your character is their race. To understand why race is the first decision, think of a character from a franchise like Lord of the Rings. Like Legolas, the first thing you think of is that he's an elf. Or Gimli, the first thing that you think of is that he's a dwarf. So here we have a list of all the races from the player's handbook. And just a short little description of each of them. This is what the standard character sheet is going to look like. For each different picture, I'm going to outline in red what we're changing or what's important and what you should be focusing on on each step. So here I've written down all of the things that you gather from picking the race of your character. I've also included on the side where we gathered the information from the player's handbook. So anything that you can't see if you're looking on a phone or anything, you'll be able to find in the book. So you can see here we've chosen Wood Elf. Each of the classes has suggested names that you can look through. We've chosen Adri Oakenheel because it's a Wood Elf suggested name. I've written in the bottom left the languages that you gain from being an elf. And then you can see down here that I've listed the elf traits and the wood elf traits. For answers on what all these things mean, you'll want to look either on the side of the screen here or into the player's handbook. The next step in defining who your character is will be their background. Their background is who they were before they decided to be an adventurer. Choices for backgrounds can be found in the player's handbook. So here you can see we chose the sage background. Again, that's come with our choice of two languages. We've chosen Terran Primordial. You want to look up what all of the languages are and choose the two that you would like your character to know. We've also written in the Sage Traits, just like we did for the Elf Traits and the Wood Elf Traits. In addition to that, we've gained two Skill Proficiencies from choosing Sage. Having a proficiency in a skill just makes you better at doing that skill. Each background also comes with a list of equipment, and you can see we've written it at the bottom of the sheet here. Also included in the background part is things for personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws, which you can roll for or choose from the list that they give you. What I like about this is that it's allowed for new players to create an in-depth character without having to be sort of an author. Instead of coming up with everything themselves, they can just use what's already in the book as a guideline. There's basically a background for anything that you would want to do, and there's also rules for making up a background if you wanted to work with your DM on that. Now that you've decided who your character is, it's time to determine what your character can do. At this point, you'll be choosing your character's class. So here we have probably the most in-depth step, which is picking your character's class. I've put together a list of classes here that you can look at to see what you'd be interested in your character being able to do, again with some short descriptions to help you out. You can see here we chose Ranger, and that comes with a number of things. You can see we put in the proficiency bonus, which is the same for all characters at level one, it'll be plus two. 
You can also see that we chose two saving throws, and those are given in the book for each class. For Ranger, we've got Strength and Dexterity. Additionally, we also added skill proficiencies because those are given by Ranger as well. We've gone down to where we had the languages earlier and we've put in some proficiencies that we got from being a Ranger. Again, we went down to the equipment and added all the equipment that we got for our class choice. We're now able to put in our hit points because that's also dependent on class. Every level one is gonna start with one hit dice and those are used mostly to heal when your character rests. I've put down the two attacks using the weapons we got from our class, and those will be modified once we put our ability scores down. Lastly, we put the ranger features underneath the elf, wood elf, and sage traits because we got features for choosing ranger. The last thing you'll need to do to determine who your character is, is roll their stats. The three most common ways that I've seen people roll stats are to roll them with dice, use standard array, which is everyone using the same numbers, or a system called point by. So for the sake of ease, we've used standard array here. Standard array is using the scores 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8 and allocating them basically in order of your favorite stat getting the highest and your least necessary stat getting the lowest. So in our case, we gave Dexterity the highest score because it's the most crucial stat for our character and Strength is the lowest stat because it's the least crucial for our character. So here I've drawn some arrows that show that the Dexterity bonus from being an Elf and the Wisdom bonus from being a Wood Elf are now going to be incorporated into the stats that we've put into our ability score column. So you can see here that the dexterity went from 15 to 17 and the wisdom went from 13 to 14 and we've removed those from the elf traits and wood elf traits to prevent confusion. So now you can see we've added modifiers underneath the ability scores. The way these modifiers work is that they're based around 10 being a plus 0. 10 and 11 is plus 0, 12 and 13 is plus 1, 14 and 15 is plus 2, 16 and 17 is plus 3, etc. That also counts backwards, so 9 and 8 are minus 1, 7 and 6 are minus 2, and so on and so forth. So here you can see a lot was added to the sheet now that we have our ability score modifiers. We're able to calculate our armor class, which in our case, we go into the book and look at scale mail, which is what our character is wearing, and add our dexterity modifier. Everyone's armor class is going to be determined by the rules of what armor they're wearing, and then their added dexterity bonus. Initiative is determined by your dexterity modifier. Hit points maximum was determined by the fact that we got 10 for being a ranger and then plus two from our constitution. Our passive wisdom perception is 10 plus your wisdom modifier, which for us was plus two, so we have 12 passive wisdom. Both our short sword and our longbow have their damage modified by our dexterity, which is plus three, so the damage is going to be plus three. Lastly, to figure out what all of your skill modifiers are and saving throw modifiers are, you have to look at whether you're proficient, which will add plus two to them, and then you'll just plug in your relevant modifier. That will determine what number you should put in the column. So here you see that if you followed everything point by point, you'll have a fully filled out character sheet ready to take to a table and play. If you've chosen to play a spellcasting class, you're gonna go into the book and you're gonna look at what your available spells are and you're gonna to have to pick out, for the most part, two cantrips and a first level spell. If I'm being honest, a new player for their first time, I don't think that they should be playing spellcasters. It adds a complicated step to the character creation process. Also, I can't stress enough that new players who 
feel like there's way too much going on in the game, you should talk to their DMs and try to get as much help as they possibly can and not worry too much about having the wrong information on their sheet. For the most part, people are always willing to help new players. For the most part, the only thing that's changed in my method to character creation and the book's method to character creation is that I have moved up the picking a background step because I think it's more important than the general person seems to think it is. I think it's the biggest change to 5th edition from previous editions and I think that moving it up in the character creation step makes for a more fluid character creation and helps players fall in love with their characters more. I think even if you're not a new player and you're a seasoned player, you could stand to benefit from using this order to create your character. Thanks for watching everybody. We hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for future D&D content.